Good evening everyone, Sean here with Chaotic Comics. It is Saturday night at like 11.30 p.m. But had nothing better to do, don't feel like sleeping, so I thought I'd make a video. Gonna do something a little different uh, this time. Gonna show some comics and then feature some music. So today's tunes, or tonight's tunes, are brought to you by Celtic Frost, Morbid Tales. Alright, so first off we have Tales of Suspense featuring Captain American Iron Man number 94, the first MODOK. Which I think there's supposed to be a television show with him coming, possibly, maybe, who knows. It's not in the best of condition as you can see here, there's some issues. I'm not really sure why I bought it. I think with shipping it was like 30 bucks, so I'm not sure if that's a good deal or not, but whatever, it is what it is. I, um, last Friday, I'd gone to get my hair cut, and then I'd ordered a take-and-bake pizza, but it wasn't ready for pickup. So there is a, like, consignment shop next door, and frequently I'll find some comics in there. Really nothing great, and every comic's $2. So, um, I think I'd pass this actual issue up several times until I, um, had read an article about this particular comic. So this is the uh, recalled error version of Mission Impossible, and you can see the um, UPC there, and it has the matching numbers, the 01, which is the first print, and the only issue with this comic, it's in good condition other than there is a crease that runs here, but for $2 plus tax, I wasn't going to leave it there. And if you don't know, the reason this was recalled is uh, Marvel did not have permission from Tom Cruise to do this comic. And so when he saw a copy of it, he felt as though, I believe it was page three, but he looked too effeminate. And so they had all those copies destroyed, with the exception of whatever was sent to the UK. Uh, and then the subsequent issues had the portion where he felt as though he looked effeminate, blocked out with just his, um, his, air, his, um, you know, quote, quote balloons or word balloons. And then there was another picture of him where they kind of made the face a little more manly. But for two bucks, I thought that was cool. Score. Sticking through my local uh, comic shop, Dollar Bin, found this. Sleepwalker 33, the very last issue. And we all know how I feel about first and last issues. Picked this up off of eBay uh, with shipping. I think it was $3.80. And I have a couple of these, but Battlestar Galactica number one, it is just a clean copy. Probably a 9.4, So, didn't want to leave that there. And then digging through my dollar bin, I, uh, dollar bins, I picked these up. So, number 17. 18, 19, and 21. Savage She-Hulk, number 25, The End, the, the last issue in that series. And while I'm thinking about it, because I never do, um, I don't do this to... Um, make a career out of this I have a lucrative career this is just a hobby it's strictly just a hobby but I always forget I generally forget to say um, please subscribe and like the channel if you're so inclined um, but if not I appreciate you stopping by and I picked this up I've been watching this for a while on eBay and I um, I don't know I finally decided to get it it was like 20 something dollars plus shipping, um, and it's House of Mystery number 321, and it is an 8.5, and it is the very last issue. Just kind of a cool cover there. For sale sign on the House of Mystery. The host is packing his bags. I just thought that was kind of cool. That was uh, from A1 Comics. They were selling it, and if you live in Northern California, um, Sacramento, there's two A1 comic locations. They're pretty cool. One of them is in an actual uh, old bank, so they keep their high-grade, uh, expensive books in an old uh, bank vault, which is kind of cool. Howard the Duck, number one. 
Tower of the Duck number 15, The Mysterious Island of Dr. Bong, and the very last issue of Howard the Duck, number 33, which I had heard um, is a low print run, which generally last issues are low print runs. Ultimate X-Men 28, I saw this while looking on eBay. Um, I don't know how I feel about the front cover. Something drew me to it, but she looks a little manly, but I don't know, I like the art, so I think that up. Just more dollar bin fodder, finishing, uh, not finishing, but um, uh, picked up Batman 487 and then Detective Comics 678. Just pick those up whenever I find those for a dollar. Found some more DC Universe in the dollar bins. So this is Justice League of America number 89. And Adventures of Superman 513. And Superboy number 5. I'm trying to get all these DC Universe uh, UPC variants, but then I had read an article, and I uh, I may be wrong uh, in this number, but there were like 200 and something different issues. So um, it's just something fun to do. Hey, whenever you find them for a dollar, why not? And this has, I picked this on the dollar bin, but I got it only because um, I have an affinity for comics that are in poly bags they're just something um kind of harkens back to you know and this isn't old but back to when um they would do this with comics or you would find like three comics in a pack um but it is wor uh, force works number five but i um, just thought that was cool when i get my comic room uh when my older son moves out i think i'm going to buy a um, I have a comic uh, spinner rack, but I think I'd like to get like a magazine rack or something, um, or maybe a pegboard system like you would find at the store, and then um, feature all of the um, bagged comics that I have, or the poly bag comics. I um, thought that might look cool. X-Men number 40, The Mark of the Monster. The X-Men meet Frankenstein, Nuff said. Submariner, number eight. The Thing and Prince Namor battle. Lois Lane, 105. Rose and Thorn, first appearance. I don't know if that's considered a spec book or not. I guess if they announced something, then it would be. Dr. Fate, number one. And this is um, just a signed copy here by Paul Levitz. I know that's heating up for some reason. I think they're going to um, do a Doctor Fate movie or a television show. They're going to use this uh, incarnation of the character. Harbinger, number 41. The last issue. And I didn't realize until I was watching someone else's video. Um, I know some of these valiant, book, valiant books can be uh, worth quite a bit. But I didn't realize that Harbinger 1 through 5, well, I knew 1, obviously. But 2, 3, 4, 5 hold value, uh, the coupon editions, because they had a low print run. I didn't know that. So I just recently ordered from eBay. I got number 5 with a coupon for like 5 bucks. I'm still looking for 1, 2, 3, 4, for a reasonable price. <clears throat> Incredible Hulk 234, Battleground Berkeley, which is um, about an hour and a half from me, so pick that up just kind of um, like another um, youtuber had said you don't really see a lot of stuff um, done around the Bay Area most everything is New York East Coast so kind of cool Captain America 255 I picked this up off eBay but then I was really kind of bummed because you'll see there's uh, someone's um, signature there Pete I am Pete I am so I was going to reach out to the seller. I think I paid like $6.40 for this uh, with shipping. I was going to return it. But then I realized that it is a Mark Jeweler, um, a Mark Jeweler insert. It has a Mark Jeweler insert. And based on that, I think it's worth about 6 bucks. So it has Mark Jeweler page, which I thought was cool. 
I don't have a lot of those um, and I don't really seek them out. And it wasn't advertised as such, so maybe the seller wasn't aware that it was or it didn't care. But I kept it. Captain Savage's Leatherneck Raiders, number one. <clears throat> G.I. Joe, the Silent Issue, number 21. This was $21. I found it on eBay. Uh, I didn't want to pay a crazy price, which I don't know if that's considered a crazy price, but some people want like 30 40 bucks for this. It is not in the best of condition. There's some issues there in the upper corner, um, some spine ticks, but for $21, I figure it's probably the lowest so I'm going to find it unless I can find it in a dollar bin somewhere. So, why not? Star Wars 39, just picked that up because of the Vader cover. And I think this is the first, um, like it says at the beginning, the official comic adaptation of the most eagerly awaited space fantasy of all, The Empire Strikes Back. So I think that this may be the beginning of this story within the Star Wars, um, this first series. But then, once again, I was kind of bummed because there's some writing up here. But I look back and I paid 99 cents plus shipping, so I'm not going to sweat it. Still a cool cover. Uh, picked this up off eBay for like 17 bucks. It's Super Bitch, which is from California Comics, 1977. It is an underground, mature comic. Um, and I think there's some value to it. The only other issue that I've seen for sale was like 30 or 40 bucks. So um, it's kind of a trippy cover. And it has sex, violence, action, gore, and more. And what more can you ask for? The Mighty Isis, number one. I'm not sure if I showed this in my last video. This was a recent pickup. Amazing Spider-Man 98. Um, one of the um, three drug issues without the um, comics code. Or the approval of the comics code. But I may have shown it, so forgive me if I have. House of Secrets 130. It's a really cool cover. Got that for a couple bucks. The Unexpected, 155 another issue for a couple bucks. Ghost Rider, just finishing this, um, this first series here. And number eight, I think those were a dollar or two each, so here, why not? The Avengers, 132 Which bums me out because um, I had bought this and it didn't have any of this damage here. And it's, and it's um, pretty significant on both sides, so it looks as though after the picture was taken and it was posted to sell, it uh, was dropped, or it was dropped um, prior to being shipped, but I'm trying to work with the seller to, um, or no, actually the seller gave me a full refund, so I just paid for shipping. This is Blue Beetle, and I cannot remember what number this is, and because of the conditions then I do not want to take it out of the bag. Um, let me see here. Give me one minute here and enjoy Celtic Frost if that is your thing. This probably doesn't appeal to a lot of people. Kind of 80s, uh, I really enjoy 80s metal, so it's a thrash 80s metal. So it is Blue Beetle, um, from the second series, number two. 1964 tiger cover and I got it for five dollars plus 350 shipping which I think is an awesome price but there's obviously some condition issues there's writing there's staining you know even in my LR you can tell there's some issues but for eight bucks I think that there's definitely some value there and it's kind of a spec book so once again why not dead of night featuring the scarecrow number 11 I think this might be the last issue in the Dead of Night series, but I've always liked this cover. I've never picked the book up and I've always liked the cover, so. This, um, next comic, picked up off eBay for like 15 bucks. It's, um, Jay and Santa Bob number one, signed by Mr. Kevin Smith. Uh, my wife got me tickets, um, to go to Gallo and, um, see Jay and Santa Bob get old live and they had um they had like some autograph um you know um headshots and stuff which i didn't really care for but i thought it'd be cool to get a comic book um signed by kevin smith and so i was looking on ebay that night 
it was like 15 bucks so cheaper than um, any of the ones there that were signed so I thought why not Prince Namor the Submariner number 16 this is an awesome cover it's kind of a horror cover just kind of creepy eerie I really, I really like that cover the Invaders King Size Annual number one This is done by Schomburg, is the artist, and I think that this may be the only art he had done. There's some significance, and I can't recall what it is, so but there's some significance. We have Brother Voodoo, and I may have shown this in my last video, so again, forgive me if so. I can't always remember everything that I show. I need What I need to do is um, dedicate a box to my next haul, or to hauls, and have it segmented out, but I'm not that organized. So this I got for like 20 bucks. Has a crease here or an issue here which I'm actually just now seeing but still I think it was worth that so I've, I've seen it you know people want crazy price for it yeah I actually didn't realize that there's like tape or something there huh it's a bummer but oh well picked this up in the dollar bin terrible condition but for dollar daredevil um, 185 Frank Miller see there's some scuffing up here and some spine ticks, but for a buck, I didn't have this one, so the death of uh, Johnny Storm, polybagged. What if from the first series, number 23, what if the Hulk had become a barbarian? 25, what if Thor and the Avengers battled the gods? And what if Captain America had then elected president number 26 and this is the um, chief justice or the person uh, swearing in Captain America is done in the likeness of Jack Kirby which is uh, pretty cool and then these um, I'm sure everyone probably picked up a copy or two this was a midnight release of Detective Comics 1000 and then the other two covers I decided on which I originally had like five covers and I put them back because I realized that's kind of ridiculous to spend 50 bucks on covers. And you know that you're going to find them a lot cheaper going forward. So I just picked up the two Beyond the um, Midnight one that I liked. Um, I really liked the Wrightson one was cool, but I put that one back. But this is, and then the one, the 30s or 40s, I liked as well. But this is a Cho cover, and it's a Night of a Thousand Batmans. I just like all the different versions of Batman. It just kind of has kind of a cool feel to it. It's that 50s cover. And then this is done by Bruce Tim, and this is the 40s variant. So the other one must be the 30s then that I was speaking of. I think it has like the clan on it or hooded figures and Batman um, ready to attack them. And then my last two books. Um, I got an incredible deal on these. So this is New Mutants 87. And I got this for like five dollars and some change. And the way I did that was I had sold some stuff on eBay, and I had the profit from what I had sold, and I applied it towards this, and I owed like five dollars and thirty cents. So essentially, for five dollars and thirty cents, I got New Mutants '87, and it's a really clean copy. I won it in a bid. I think it sold for like eighty something bucks plus shipping. So. That's cool. I didn't have that. And Tomb of Dracula. Same with this. This, I don't know what this sold for. It sold for like two seventy. dollars But uh, with everything that I had sold, I think I had to pay like 80 bucks or something for it. You know, it has some condition issues, but this book is just starting to get kind of out of control, I feel. So for 80 bucks, I thought that was a great deal. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining me. I think it's probably beyond midnight now, so I think we're in a Sunday morning. Let me look here. Oh, it's 11.41, so we're still cool. So it's not quite Sunday yet. So uh, thank you for joining your late evening with me. Hope everyone has a great day. And remember, before we know it, it'll be Monday and work will be here. Have a nice night.